Oh, hi there, everyone. As you can see, I saw Into the Storm and an advanced screening. Not terribly advanced, because the movie officially comes out tomorrow, but slightly advanced. And I got a free poster, which is more than I usually get. I've only been to a handful of these advanced screenings, but usually the only thing I walk out of the theater with is an empty bag of popcorn. This time I get a poster. I wish more studios would give out posters of these things. I never got a poster for How to Train Your Dragon 2, DreamWorks. Where were you on that one? That I would have liked. This, well, it's a nice looking poster, I suppose. Uh, can't really say the same for the movie. Uh, but well, technically I can. It's a nice looking movie. That's about the only thing it has going for it though. Uh, I mean, it's not terrible. It is sitting at 15% on Rotten Tomatoes last I checked, which really is much lower than it deserves. It's nowhere near as bad as that score would suggest. But it's not all that great either. Uh, the basic story behind this movie is it takes place in small town USA and they're experiencing, oh my god, what the fuck, the worst tornado storm in history and they're all frantically trying to survive this massive storm. And at the same time, there are some storm chasers in town who are filming a documentary, and unlike most of the residents of this town, they're actually running to the storm. At first. Because in the end, everyone ends up running away from the storm because it's a disaster movie. Except for two people. There are these two crazy rednecks in the movie who fancy themselves amateur daredevils, so of course they are basically trying to do their own storm chasing in their reinforced pickup truck, and by reinforced, I mean they stapled a bunch of pieces of plywood to it. And man, these characters were stupid, but, you know, I will say this, at least they had some personality, which is more than I can say for most of the characters in this movie. There's really not much to them. They're very one-dimensional, very bland, uh, I mean, nothing really wrong with the acting. They're, the actors are all doing an okay job with what they're given. Although, I will say Richard Armitage needs to work on his American accent a bit. Because it's, uh... Not very convincing. It's not the worst I've heard, but... It, uh... Yeah, yeah, Richard... Practice that a bit, will ya? Or, or just don't play American characters. You know, if, if they had said he was a British guy who emigrated to the States at one point and then married an American woman, popped out a couple of kids, then I could have understood why his accent was kind of somewhere between English and American. But the movie didn't do that, so I assume he was just trying to be American. I, I can only assume that's what he was going for with that. But anyway, yeah, the acting, it's okay. The characters are just kind of there. The story is... There's not much to it. Really, all of that is just a backdrop for the visual effects and the action. And to the movie's credit, the visuals are very well done. Uh, the scenes where the tornadoes are just ripping shit up and tearing down buildings and trees and everything in their path all looks very good. There's one shot in particular, um, I actually have a picture of it right behind me here, of a tornado that's basically on fire. It runs through a gas station, and of course, gas spills everywhere, catches fire when a power line falls down upon it. I think that's what happened. And you get this huge vortex of flame swirling through the air. Looks really cool. But while that's very much to the movie's credit, it's also in a way to the movie's detriment, because here's the thing. This is presented as a found footage movie. And a lot of this footage looks way too good for what it was supposedly filmed on. Now, the stuff that's filmed by the documentary crew, I can understand why that would look as good as it does. Because they're filming an actual movie, they have professional quality cameras, it makes sense it would look that good. But when a little handheld camcorder, or even worse, a cell phone, looks every bit as good as the professional stuff, that's where this movie has a problem. And it screws this up in the very 
first shot. The very first shot. Movie opens up with just a black screen with the credits pasted over it. And while the opening credits are rolling, you hear the voices of these high school kids who are sitting in a car in the dark of night. And they're sitting there talking to each other. And then one of them says, hey, are you filming this? And the guy says, no, no, I'm just checking my messages. And then you immediately cut to the kid in question holding his arm out like this as if he's filming this scene with the greatest motherfucking cell phone camera that has ever been invented. Oh my, it looks and sounds pristine. Now, just for comparison's sake, now, I'm shooting this with the front-facing camera on my cell phone. And I'm specifically using the front-facing camera because in that shot in the movie, he claims he's not filming, he's just checking his messages, which means he would have to be using the front-facing camera, which is almost always of far lesser quality than the rear-facing camera. There are maybe a handful of exceptions out there, but that's usually the case. Now, this is just for illustrative purposes. This is not top of the line. Uh, my phone was pretty high-end when I got it two years ago, but that was two years ago. But this is just an example of what cell phone footage from the front-facing camera would be most likely to look like. And keep in mind, I am in a fairly well-lit room in a house. These kids were in a car in the middle of the night, lit only by the dome light in their automobile. So not only were they shooting on the front-facing camera on a cell phone, but they were in low light. And somehow this looks like professional quality footage. I am calling bullshit on that. So... Yeah, this this is a uh, actually a trend that I've seen with found footage movies lately. Chronicle did the same thing. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I've heard Earth to Echo also did this. Uh, it certainly looked like it from the trailers, where the footage just looks way too good for what this supposedly being filmed on. It's almost like Hollywood wants to make found footage movies because a lot of people like them, but at the same time, they don't want them to look like found footage movies, which totally kills the illusion that this is footage being filmed by the common man. This is not how you do found footage. If this is what your movie looks like, then it's found footage in name only. And then it is just a pointless label. It ceases to be a genre. It's just words. Words are wind. I could probably make a video about this. Found footage movies, you're doing it wrong. So that's probably my biggest problem with this movie. My other big problem with this movie has to do with the last scene. Now, I have to spoil the ending to talk about this. So here, spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear any spoilers, click the mute button until this alert goes away. So. I'll give you five seconds. Okay, so I briefly mentioned a minute ago that there are these two crazy rednecks who fancy themselves amateur daredevils. They pop up a few times in this movie, shooting footage with a, a cell phone and a GoPro. And the GoPro, I can understand, looking as good as it does. The cell phone, again, looks way too good. But at some point, these two idiots end up getting way too close to the tornado and just start flying through the air. And this is the point where their footage just cuts out, presumably because their cameras get destroyed by the tornado. And at that point, I'm thinking, okay, for the most part, while these two rednecks have provided a little bit of comic relief here and there, the movie has pretty much been playing this straight and has taken a pretty serious tone. I mean, this th it makes no mistake that this is a very serious natural disaster going on, and there are people getting hurt or, in some cases, horribly, horribly killed. That flaming tornado I mentioned, one of the documentary workers gets sucked up into that thing, and you see his flaming body flying through the air. That's kind of horrifying. 
So I figured, okay, given that this is a pretty serious film, if we see what looks like the two rednecks getting sucked up into the tornado, they're dead. They have to be. And the movie ends with most of the major players surviving. And, you know, in the end, they're all, you know, filming a little mini documentary of their own, basically just talking about how great it is to be alive. It ends on a pretty sombering note. And then, just when you think the movie's over, the screen goes black. And then... You hear the voices of these goddamn rednecks. Yes, somehow they survived. Hooey! Boy, you up in a tree! Yeah, so were you. Huh? Oh, yeah! Oh, I can't believe we survived that! That was some good shit, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, man. That was amazing! We're gonna get so many hits on YouTube for this! woo I tell you what! And then the branch snaps and one of them falls down. Dun, 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 dun. What the fuck, movie? Oh. I, while I was watching this in the theater, as soon as they came back on screen right at the end, I just blurted out, what? I couldn't hold it in. Just, oh. God damn, that ending pissed me off. It really did. If the... I, it's far too late to change the theatrical release, but when they release this on DVD or Blu-ray, I really think they need to release a special edition or director's cut or whatever the fuck they want to call it. Cut the first scene because it's pointless and cut the last scene because it's stupid. You can leave the rest. The movie's still not going to be all that great, but it'll be okay at least and it won't have that stupid-ass ending. Oh. Okay, so now the spoiler alert has gone away. It, here's the non-spoiler version. The ending is stupid. The ending is really, really stupid. J just the very last shot. Not how the story wraps up. That's fine, but the very last shot. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Ugh. Okay. So, final verdict... If most of you who are watching this and are planning to go to the movies this weekend probably aren't going to be that interested in seeing this anyway because the movie most people are going to see is probably Ninja Turtles. Um, if you have no interest in seeing Ninja Turtles, well, then you should probably just go see Guardians of the Galaxy again because that's a much better movie. Uh, this one... Maybe it would be worth a rental. I can't really recommend it for more than that. It's... It's just... It's okay. It's... Yeah. It's okay. That's all I can say. So until next time, take care.